Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual open evening for our um, Brooksby and Melton courses. And we've also got a virtual open evening for our Stevenson courses tonight as well. Today, we're going to be talking about our Uniform Public Services courses. So I've got um, our lecturer, Marcus, here with us and Andy, who is the manager of the area. So I'm just going to let them introduce themselves, uh, tell you a bit about the course and please ask any questions that you've got in the Q&A box and we'll get around to them all this evening for you. Hi, so as um, Megan's just uh, alluded to, my name's Marcus. I'm one of the Uniform Public Service lecturers. Um, I've recently left the army at the start of the year, so I've got a wide um, array of knowledge, military background, um, and I am looking forward to meeting some of you, hopefully as many as possible in the upcoming term. Hi everybody, my name's Andy and I am the section manager for Uniform Public Services uh, as well as Sport. Um, really excited in regards to our Uniform Public Service provision, uh, particularly going into the next academic year and beyond. Uh, we have two brilliant new members of staff, which uh, as you can see, one of Marcus has just introduced himself. Uh, we have another member of staff currently with us called Steve who is also Royal Marines background, and we are also having a, a new member of staff called Lauren starting with us, who is uh, police force background as well. So the diversity of, uh, of the lecturing staff and the knowledge of the lecturing staff is, uh, is really good. So I'm really, really excited about that. The provision that we offer at the college, it's a new provision for that, that's based at the Brooksby campus. Originally, it was at the Stevenson campus. However, with our facilities that we have over here, uh, we've brought the provision solely over to the to the Brooksby campus. And the, the levels that we that we run from next year, we're going to be running a, a NCFE level one certificate, uh, which is an introduction into the UPS and sport. Uh, Entry requirements for that is one GCSE at, uh, at three or above, which is preferably in English because of the written work that you have to do. We also run a uh, level two diploma, uh, which it, for entry requirements for that is four GCSEs at grade three and above, ideally including your maths and English. And then we go on to uh, a level three program where uh, it's a two year program. However, you, you sign up for a year at a time. So in year one, you will be studying a diploma, which is uh, 540 guided learning hours. And then moving into year two, you will uh, you will top up to the full extended diploma, which will give you the equivalent of three A levels at the end of it. In terms of the uh, content that we that we run in the courses, so as as it's pretty obvious as it sounds, the, the level one is an introduction into the into the sport and uniform public services. So um, you will do things in that, like taking part in sport, leading others, personal exercise and fitness. You'd be doing an introduction into strength and conditioning and gaining a, an understanding of sport and the active leisure industry and the uniform services. Within our level two programme, that then progresses on to investigating different types of employments within the uniform services. You'll go on to physical fitness that's re required in the uniform services, health and safety, as well as health and hygiene, map reading and navigation. Uh, and you'll also do the explore the use of telecommunications in the uniform services, which Marcus is is particularly uh, an expert in, given his Royal Signals background. Um, moving on to level three, again, we, we then develop the knowledge that you learn from, from level two. Ideally, we want a merit as an entry requirement onto the level three course due to the nature of the coursework that, that you will be doing. Uh, and things like that, we're looking at, uh, again, further developing aspects of physical fitness, getting you ready for if you want to go into any of the forces that require any fitness testing um, as an entry requirement. We look at mental and physical well-being, emergency planning and response of the uniform services, so how they work together. Um, collaboration between uniform services, I've just mentioned, outdoor and adventurous expeditions as well, uh, and also security procedures to, to name a few. Alongside the courses that you will study, you'll also do additional qualifications, such as uh, we will in be introducing a leadership programme for you. So you'd be completing a sports leaders level two qualification at, uh, at level two. 
We're also looking to commence our Duke of Edinburgh Bronze Award, um, hopefully in September 22. There's already plans underway to uh, to, to start that. So um, as well as gaining your main qualification, you'll also gain a host of, of extra qualifications as well. Um, the, in terms of progression, obviously the, the courses are set up to progress you from level one to the end of level three. Um, if, for example, you take the level two diploma, that would gain you entry onto our level three course if you successfully complete it at merit standard. It also allows you entry onto various apprenticeships such as business fire safety advisor, um, operational firefighters, just to name a few. Um, but obviously our level three programme, uh, upon completion of that, you would hopefully give you the, the skills that you need to enter any of the uniform public services. Um, also provide a platform for you to go on to higher education as well. Fantastic, thank you Andy. Um, something I'm always really impressed with is, with this course is uh, how many enrichment activities you do and like how many trips you were able to go on last year and the amazing like visits from the army. I didn't know if you could talk a bit more about that, probably Marcus is better about those. I can, I can start, off, start off Meg with the, with the previous yeah. years and then I'll let Marcus come into the ones for, for this year if that's okay because um, I know Marcus is still relatively new to the to the organisation as well. So in, in previous years, public services or the uniform public services provision have been, have been um, envy of other departments really because the, the, the trips that have um, been on previously uh, include going to New York, um, you know, going to the NYPD, the fire department in New York. Um, we've gone outdoor expeditions over in Norway in terms of the land navigation type activities that you'd need to do to complete your course. We've been skiing in Hungary recently for obvious reasons. Uh, we've had to sort of can the trips a little bit because of, of COVID and that we haven't been able to go on any of those, uh, you know, overnight residential type activities. But I'll let Marcus come into the some of the trips that he's taken the, the students on just as we were coming out of the COVID uh, pandemic. Yeah, so definitely. So once the restrictions lifted um, as much as they did, we were able to go out and um, implement some team building activities. Managed to get two groups, the level two, to Bosworth Water Park, and we encouraged team building by creating and building our own rafts and flotation devices. Within that, we did races to incorporate further our team building, our confidence. We did confidence building, so basically relying on each other we uh, one person would swim out to a location and then the rest would go and get them relying on each other using our communication that we'd learned within the classroom with regards to our level three course we took them to um, spring lakes which is on the outskirts of nottingham it's a large water-based inflatable assault course which was ideal for our physical preparation as well as again confidence and teamwork building um, as well as incorporating our communication skills to further develop all of them skills in an enjoyable and outdoor experience. We were able to go to various sport locations, participate in that sport, learn a new sport and also again team building because obviously it's a vital skill within any of the uniform public services. Um, within the next academic year we're looking at doing completely the same stuff that I've just mentioned and progress it a little bit further, try and get further afield. As Andy has already mentioned, we've got uh, navigation as one of our subjects will be, uh, one of our units will be studying. This lends itself to us getting out and about quite, quite, uh, quite frequently. So which will be ideal in order for us to get out of the classroom and get some practical elements on board. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so I was wondering uh, what kind of careers you can go into. Obviously, you've got sort of the army and armed forces um, and the police. Are there any other ones that like you could go into from this course that you maybe wouldn't think of? So um, I know a lot of people ask about like paramedics or firefighters. Are they options as well? Absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. We have the, the main ones you, you've already mentioned, so that the 
exit pathways, if you like, are, are into the forces, Army, Navy. Um, we also have uh, students that, that go into the police, uh, firefighters, paramedic that, uh, that Meg's mentioned. We've, we've had students in the past go on to include in this year and go on to paramedical science at, at university. So it, it, the, the curriculum that we deliver at, here at SMB Group is, is diverse for a reason. So we're not pigeonholing you into a particular uh, uniform public service. We want to give you the, um, the experience of all of them. So if you, if you come onto the programme and you're not quite sure what you want to do, but you know it is in, in one of the uniform form services, you will get a good background to be able to, to help with your decision making going, in, going on into the future. Um, something else that, that is, is quite um, outside of the box, if you like, that we've had students go on to. We've had students that want to go and work in, in dog handling in the uniform services, for example. So again, the, the course that, that they've studied in, in terms of the uniform services has given them that background and then they've gone on to university or, or higher education to, to look at the animal side of it as well. So like I said, we, we, we give you a broad curriculum for a reason. We don't want to be pigeonholing anybody. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I know that something that uh, a lot of people um, sort of ask about with this course is what kind of fitness they need for starting it. So do they need to be doing anything over the summer? Like what level would you expect for when they start with us? I can, I'll start and I can leave Marcus to, to finish off. But just I just wanted as, as a manager, um, because it has been questions that have been brought up in the past where students think they have to, they get a place on the uniform public service course and they have to go to the gym because there's an entry requirement. You know, you have to be a certain level of fitness. Absolutely, you don't. But we do advise you to 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 be prepared for you to to take part in, uh, you know, the un a unit that you might study. For example, at level two is physical fitness. So um, we do need you to be prepared and and uh, ready to take part in in that those kinds of activities. But I'll let Marcus come into the 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 more, um, you know, what it might include. In terms of in terms of within the curriculum and within the forces, yeah, definitely. So I would say you would have a willingness to partake in any physical element that is asked of you in order to get a full exposure of the course. Um, with regards to fitness requirements, as Andy's mentioned, there aren't any. But obviously, if you were joining a UPS course, we would hope you have aspirations to join a uniform public service in the future. Um, majority of them do have fitness requirements, which we will look at throughout the duration of the course. So with the willingness to participate and to hopefully improve your fitness throughout the duration of your studies will then excel and push you forward and further in your application to progressing into a uniform public service. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so we haven't had any questions so far, um, but if anyone does have any, please pop them in the Q&A box. You can just type them in anonymously and we can answer anything um, that you want this evening. Um, I'll just go through some frequently asked questions that we often get. So um, if someone's got additional learning support, how does that work? Um, you know, maybe they've got dyslexia, maybe they need a little bit more support than that. Um, do we have a, a support team that can help? Um, and do they get help outside of lessons with that? Yeah, sure. So we we at interview once you've had your your interview with us, um, any additional support needs or learning support needs will be highlighted on that interview form. And then what happens is there's a separate form that you need to fill in just to make sure that we are aware of, of your needs. Um, and then before that offer is once that interview is completed and before that we we make you a, an offer at the college that then goes off to the learning support team. And the reason for, for that to happen is just to make sure that we have got everything and we will be able to get everything in place for you by the time that you arrive. Um, and then once all that is sorted, you, you will get your offer. You will get your offer in the post. So that there is that. But obviously, if if there is anything that is, is missed from that interview process, um, you know, if there's something that, that you don't disclose, for example, we can then pick that up at induction week. Uh, and we do have a dedicated learning support team where um, we have learning support assistants, we have um, 
in, in the past we've had uh, one to one classes that you that you can attend with with one of the learner support assist assistants. So that support is in place and the support is in place to, to help you succeed while you while you're with us at, at SMB group. Great, thank you. Um, I would just add to that actually, if you've got a Form 8 and you're joining us this year, please bring it for a moment because that will help if you haven't already given it to us. Because um, our additional learning support will be, uh, team will be really thankful for that. Um, so next question. Um, I've actually had a few questions today from sort of parents and students about um, Uniform Public Services and what uniform they need to buy for September or for next September if they want to use, uh, if they want to come. Do they have a specific uniforming um, requirement? Um, and how flexible is that? Do you want to pick that one up, Marcus? Yes, yeah, so the uniform that we are hoping everyone will participate and uh, buy into is essentially the same sort of polo, breathable polo that I'm wearing at the minute. It's got um, the SMB logo and picture at the front. And obviously, you can get it at enrolment. You'll also use combat trousers, which are a breathable walking um, attire type trousers and boots. Obviously, if it's a practical element, you'll be wearing shorts and also you'll be wearing trainers. Whatever the activity is, obviously, will dress appropriately to that. And just just on that as well, Meg, yeah, Marcus has, has got that absolutely bang on. It, it's we have a, a company that come in, so we, we've invited them into enrolment. So when you enroll onto your program, uh, Jeff, we call him, who, who's in charge of all our kit, and it's similar to what Marcus is wearing, uh, but a different colour. You'll be able to have a look at, at what you will need to purchase and uh, and then order it directly from the website, which uh, which Jeff will give you at enrolment. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I would just mention as well, um, if anyone's applied for this year, you should be receiving your welcome pack in the post, so either tomorrow or early next week, and that will have um, some tips for preparing for college, and it'll also have a QR code that will link you to our website, um, and that will show your full um, kit list that you'll need for the year, so that will help you to prepare as well. Oh, we've got a question, so let's have a look. Um, someone said, can you elaborate on need and merit for the level three course? Uh, would I need to do the level two course first? And so what does level two, uh, what does the merit mean? It means that they'll fit into level three. Yeah, sure. So so in order to get onto our level to get onto our level three course, if you are currently doing the level two or if you go on to the level two next year, for example, in order to progress onto our level three, you will need a merit within that level two. If you already receive your entry requirements, so for example, you've taken your GCSEs this year, you get five um, fours and above, then you come directly onto our onto our level three program. So like I said, the, the level two program is four GCSEs at three and above, including maths and English. Um, if that means that you go on to our level two program, great, but you need a merit onto that level two program to get onto the level three. If you get the grades for level three, which is five GCSEs, grade four and above, including maths and English, then you don't need to worry about that merit. Then you already get onto our, our level three course. Um, it is important to note as well, just to, to sort of further elaborate on that question, that um, it, it's really important that you do strive to achieve your English and maths before you come to the college. Um, that is built into your timetable where you can retake your English and maths with us. However, that is um, that when you think about it, if if that is on your timetable, then it might mean that you miss out on some supported study, for example, it might mean that you miss out some enrichment. So there is a bit of a carrot there for you to, to really try in your English and maths if you haven't already or you wanted to come onto the programme in September 22. So. Great, thank you. Yeah, we have had quite a few questions about that today, as you can imagine, with GCSE results. Um, so yeah, if you've uh, obviously if you've not achieved them, it's uh, not the end of the world. You can do it with us, which is good. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for next year, definitely prioritise your math and English. Um, I don't think we've actually got much time left. We've only got two minutes. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, um, as I said, please pop them in the chat. Um, what I'll do is I'll pop an email address in there as well. So if you have any further questions that you, you know, if you think about it later, if you didn't want to ask them um, during the live event, you can um, just email the marketing team and we will pass any queries onto the team. 
Um, so yeah, I think that's all we've got time for today. Thank you every, everyone for joining us and thank you so much to Andy and Marcus as well. Thanks everybody. Thank you.